now we will see about the ministry's guidelines how the glucose to be managed in a ward the screening is obviously whenever a person comes to the hospital the first thing one of the first things to be screened is the capillary blood glucose and if capillary blood glucose is more than 250 the random one and after getting admitted you do the first pre meal and two hour post meal after a major meal if pre meal is more than 150 or post meal more than 200 these are the criteria to suggest pharmacotherapy straight away along with drug therapy along with diet and nutrition management okay so that means a higher glucose to start with you start straight away the pharmacotherapy what pharmacotherapy we will see later but if suppose somebody has got lesser than these target values the random of more than 180 or maybe a pre meal of 140 and a post meal of 180 you can just give them a diet control and keep monitoring at a regular intervals if somebody has got a a1c more than 6.5 diagnosis again it indicates a diabetes so it requires a uh, straight away drug and uh, the management when somebody has got normal glucose at admission but you cannot just leave him because there are some situations where the disease is worsening there are situations where we have started steroids on the third day or fourth day so these are the times you should be aware that you should keep monitoring the glucose regularly normally in a intensive care setup glucose is monitored on daily basis even if he is not diabetic but somebody who is admitted to a ward the patient the doctor may not put that much focus so it's important to know as severity of illness increases and patient is initiated on steroids it's important to keep monitoring at regular intervals maybe every second day or third day so that's important to know <coughs> excuse me if somebody has got high risk individual obese elderly patients with comorbid ailments you monitor twice a day every 3 to 4 days so that you are able to pick up early and then treat early when to use oral drugs we discussed what are the oral what are the issues with oral prescribe oral only if there are no contraindications obviously but only in mild covid and mild hyperglycemia why i have said so is because the a1c reducing capability of oral drugs is only to the tune of 0.6 to 1% and they will have some lag effect before they actually start making difference in the body so you can't take in a covid scenario is a dynamic scenario you can't take a tablet today and hope that the sugar will come down after one week or one month and then i will become all right by then so it is a very very limited spectrum where it is used very mild covid possibly in opd management or somebody who has got a very insignificant hyperglycemia that maybe addition of tablet will do the job and he doesn't require to be uh, giving multiple doses of insulin or a single dose of insulin also so this is the only spectrum where you can use the oral drugs rest of the patients you require insulin now what drugs relatively safe dpp4 inhibitors and caution with caution you can use metformin and sulfonylureas preferable to avoid are sglt2 inhibitors and pioglucosone and the insulin therapy is obviously if there are contraindications to oral moderate to severe covid and if the glucose values are high definitely you would give a in insulin and when to give infusion by and large if you have a higher glyce hyperglycemia values number 1 number 2 patients who are using multiple other drugs which will affect the glucose number 3 patient is on nilparoral or patient is on parenteral nutrition patient is on ventilator or rt feeds every 2 hours some of these patients and mostly mostly in intensive care and in critical care setups it's a infusion only what is being practiced because very rarely a person who is taking regular meals is admitted there 
so these are the times when somebody who is on regular eating meals without vomiting without any issue that is a time you can look at using a not using a infusion and use a pre meal insulin or other regimes as what i have said but infusion is mostly used for anybody who is got any severe hyperglycemia anybody who is admitted in the intensive care and what we should target is a target of between 100 to 180 preferably pre meal less than 140 and post meal less than 180 and what dose basal bolus regime and infusion we have already discussed this earlier these are the i mean these are given in the mh guidelines also about what regimens we can use the basal bolus entails using the three times bolus coverage with one basal component basal plus is only using a single shot of bolus with the major meal of the day and basal insulin will cover for the rest of the days and you can use a correctional insulin that is like whenever the you are giving some basal component but your pre meal values are still high then maybe you can add up some more supplemental insulin or a correctional dose and add it up to calculate for the next day calculations so this is these are the different regimens what you use these are the this is from an article of uh, nature about what you can use and what you Uh, cannot use as far as the management of uh, diabetes is concerned in patients with covid by and large what is important to know is if you in the top uh, column you can see that recommended to use patients in your left side uninfected but living in environment with prevalent covid most of the drugs obviously ambulatory mild disease is the second column which insulin dpp4 inhibitors and metformin are there hospitalized with moderate disease insulin and dpp4 inhibitors and metformin and hospitalized with severe disease it's insulin plus or minus dpp4 inhibitors the second one is actually where you can can use with caution can use with caution is here somebody is on opd spectrum maybe sulfonylureas and sglt2 inhibitors here other drugs come into play but most of the times the metformin glp1 in hospital setting only in with caution not routinely recommended and the tzd sulfonylureas most of the oral drugs are not recommended in the moderate to severe and admitted critically ill patients so insulin dpp4 inhibitors and metformin are the key factors whenever we are looking at managing the hyperglycemia in covid patients